Hi, Robert Francis. How are you doing today? Uh, good. Bonjour. <laughs> Sable, I left you in the sunrise. I left you saying soon it will all be over soon. It will all be over soon. It will all be over soon. Stranger in the First Place is your third album. It will be out in France uh, the 3rd of June. Yes. So uh, I heard that your process of creation uh, was different for, the, for this one. So can you tell us? Traditionally, making songs and writing songs can actually get kind of monotonous and boring after a while. To sit there and you write your lyrics and then, then you write the song and then you record it. So. And as an artist, I think, you know, what you have to do to make things fresh and to keep things alive is you have to inspire yourself and keep surprising yourself. So at one point I was just having trouble with, with writing and I stopped and I came back and I decided I only wanted to write poetry. And I wrote some 80-something poems and one day I was just reading through the poems and then, uh, and then, and then I was strumming the guitar and I had a melody in my head and I was just checking one of my poems and I realized it fit perfectly with the song and with the melody and so all of a sudden these two worlds collided and uh, it was like surprising and exciting and finally I was like oh this is what it's about this is music you know this is what I should feel I should feel excited to write a song and, uh, and that's how I sort of did this record. In the last song of your album Dangerous Neighborhood you say, uh, my man is a dangerous neighborhood. So is it true? Uh, oh, sure. <laughs> it's like the truest. It's the truest thing on that record, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Yeah. Um, you know, in the album, there's a lot of uh, a sort of thematic um, underlying thread that sort of ties the whole thing together is this whole idea of being free and and driving away and, and like leaving the past behind and changing and, and I end it with that thought because it's sort of like no matter what I do, I still cannot shake this part of me that is so insane. <laughs> and you know, like all these deep uh, sort of, the interior of my psyche is always just like running wild. And so it's like, even if I really truly tried to be happy and could be happy, it's like my mind won't let me in. But I guess that's the plight of most like songwriters or artists or whatever. So have something insane in your head. So. I think so. <laughs> Otherwise, then I, I would be boring probably. So, <laughs> so uh, you've talked about poetry and you've read a lot of poets like Stanley Kunitz. So why did you choose to write poetry for... Is it get along with your music? So poetry is a kind of music? I was always fascinated by it because it exists on its own. If, if you're a true poet and you, you can really, you can convey like such a deep message with just like a pair, like with just this many lines. You know, music, it's like, it's a different thing because you have, you have all these soundscapes and all these different uh, in instruments to like convey a feeling, whereas poetry, it's just like simple text. And if you can really accomplish it with just these w words, then you're really like a, that's like true art. So I was always fascinated by that. On all of your album, uh, you approach the question of love and breaking up. So you had some problem to stay in couple? Yeah, I had definite problems. I mean, it's hard for me to be in a committed relationship. I tend to be a, I can be a jealous person. I can be like a angry person. You know, I have a lot of like, there's so many, um, conflicting emotions inside me but I mean love is, is is dangerous and it's very hard to like commit yourself to someone and you know if you finally submit yourself to someone then they have all the ability to hurt you and it's always a scary thing it's like to really fall in love you have to really submit yourself and uh, and so for me it's like I only really could truly do that with one person and I did get hurt and but it does it does create good art and I think you know you have to suffer a bit to create to create something meaningful, so I don't regret any of it. <laughs> and so, can you tell us a night uh, when you had your first musical revelation? You were 10? Oh, sure. So, can you tell us this story? I was sitting outside a club called The Mint in Los Angeles, and uh, 
and this this uh, this my, one of my favorite actors, Harry Dean Stanton, was in a three-piece white three-piece white suit with a highball glass of scotch on stage, and he was singing with his blues band. And his blues guitar player had seen me outside, like noodling on one of his guitars, because I was just a kid. My sister brought me to the show just because they thought it was so funny to bring like this their little brother around uh, to these concerts, you know. And during their encore, he motioned for me to come up on stage, and he said, and he dropped this big guitar, you know, over me, and I started soloing, and Harry Dean Stanton's there. I only have photographic images of it, like all of looking up, because I was so short. <laughs> but I would see Harry Dean up there, and then Shaka Khan, I just remember her coming on stage and getting on her knees, and her hair just like pouring all over the stage, like just, you know, just singing to me. And, uh, and I started soloing, and it was like the first time like, I, mean, I don't know, it was like, it was insane. And Vim Vendors was in the audience, and it was, well, such, uh, it was a total dream. <laughs> Very weird. Yeah. I'll drift away to the moonlight and the open road. Between the bullet and the time to reload, I can finally see what I never seen when I was perfectly old. So you took guitar lesson with John Frusciante from the guitarist from Red Hot Chili Peppers. So how was it? I think more so than the information that I gleaned from him as a guitar player. I think what was more important for me was to see the way that he lived. As far as the music goes, he tried to teach me a lot of theory and reading music. And from where I come from, I can barely like I barely understand how to read music. <laughs> I wasn't the best student, but he tried really hard to teach me. And you were the only student. I was no, I was the only student. <laughs> I sort of messed it up, but. <laughs> and, uh, and so your first guitar was from uh, Ray Kuder. So he made the music for Paris, Texas, and My Blueberry Night from Wong Kar Wai. Yeah. You've been, uh, how do you say, surrounded by so many great musicians and guitarists. So. Why didn't you do on your album some music in a technical way with two or three solos and songs that last two or, or maybe 12 or 13 minutes? So <laughs> why didn't you do that? I just think it's all part of the greater picture, you know? I think I would rather do these youthful songs while I still can, you know? It's like, like the music I make is... Uh, I've always, I'm just trying to capture these moments in my youth and just... When I wrote all of my trains, like I can remember when I wrote it and where I was at that time. And same thing with like Mescaline or when I wrote Junebug. Like I remember exactly where I was in that day. It's like these little markers in time. And so, so I want to get all that out of the way before I can start experimenting with these like grandiose, like world music type things. I mean, I could probably do something like that very well, I would think actually. Maybe later. better. Yeah, later. <laughs> yeah, because I can, I can do that. Yeah, that's probably be more fun to do when I'm a little older and a little more like weathered anyway, so. You left school at 16, so to travel and you, I've read that you lived dangerously. Yeah, I think, well, growing up, I came from a well-to-do family, I had parents that loved me, I had the things I wanted, I grew up in a nice neighborhood. Uh, when I looked around, there was really nothing wrong with my life. I was personally, like I, I I was a crazy kid, like chemically, like imbalanced, like totally nuts. Uh, <laughs> I was always asking myself, like, why are you like this? Why are you so crazy? And, and, but I started to realize, I think, to be, to, to really create something meaningful, I decided I did like torture myself. I started torturing myself so I could create good art. And I was, I, I was drinking three bottles of whiskey a day and crashing cars and doing drugs and never sleeping and and it was just this process like to basically I wanted to feel pain and I wanted to feel something deep and then feel something that like and so basically in that darkness finally from all that I could pull I could like pull this real deep emotions and I could get to know them like those deep deep dark places were like my friends and I could eventually like pull from that and write songs and I think that's In the end, I think that's what is, people are attracted to, is like, you know, the unknown and the darkness and those types of things. They're enticing. So that's sort of why I, I think, in hindsight, that's why I think maybe subconsciously I was living that you way. You needed to do that. Yeah. 
When was the last time that you felt sadness? I feel more boredom now. <laughs> and, then, and then I get sort of just, I don't get truly sad anymore. Like, you know, because I think I've just gone through that stage in my life. And now I'm just more like, if I get bored, I get antsy and I get anxious. And it's like, I need to be constantly creating something, you know, but it doesn't, I don't have to pull from that. Like, I know that place well enough to, like, if I want to go for the darkness, I know where it is and I can, you know. But now it's like, yeah, I haven't felt sad like that for a little while. And the last time you loved? Um, I've loved recently. That that hasn't gone away. <laughs> no. <laughs> Because of what? Uh, loving is easy. You know, I can, I can continue to do that. And your best memories? Probably, I don't know. Probably playing show. I mean, La Cigale was one of my best memories. Playing shows in Paris, coming out and having the sold-out crowd sing along to all the songs. You know, that was one of the best moments. I've heard you saying that you didn't like to play live, but it was a few years ago. But is it still true? No. No, I love to play live now. No, it's right. Yeah, I was just being a baby. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> So thank you, Robert Francis, and we wish you good luck in France, and thank you for this interview. Thank you. Have a nice day. Over from the past, my little angel, you remember, 18, I left you in the night sky, you were my dream. Growing up